Since its launch in 1977, Voyager 1 has traveled farther than any other spacecraft in the history of humanity. It became the first spacecraft to capture detailed images of Jupiter and Saturn. After completing its primary mission, it began an additional mission to explore the distant regions of the solar system, including the Kuiper Belt and the boundary of the heliosphere. Although the probe still receives and transmits signals, NASA has stated that its energy will soon deplete, rendering it unable to communicate with Earth. Voyager 1 is a NASA spacecraft launched from Cape Canaveral in 1977. Its mission was to explore Jupiter and Saturn, and it was expected to operate for several years before its system ceased functioning. However, Voyager 1, like Voyager 2, exceeded scientists' expectations and has operated for approximately 10 times longer. More than 40 years have passed since their launch, and they are still traveling and sending data back to Earth. On board are control and communication systems, power sources, and other equipment allowing the Voyager spacecraft to function autonomously, sending back information needed by scientists. Additionally, a gold-plated phonograph record was attached, containing information about Earth's location for potential extraterrestrial encounters, along with a selection of images and sounds. The main difference in the Voyager 1 program was the selection of a shorter route compared to Voyager 2. Voyager 1 was slated to visit only Jupiter and Saturn, while the second probe was directed on a slower trajectory through the solar system, past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The service life of both spacecraft has exceeded the estimated duration by tenfold. Voyager 1 flew past Jupiter in 1979 and then visited the vicinity of Saturn in 1980. Together with its twin, it made a significant contribution to the study of the solar system, providing detailed information about the atmospheres of the gas giants, their moons and rings. In particular, the Voyagers captured images of active volcanoes on Io, photographed the icy surface of Europa, the rings of Saturn, the cyclones of Neptune, and much more. The information they transmitted is still being studied. Over the past two decades, NASA has used Voyager's instruments to study cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and the plasma environment in interstellar space. Both probes no longer take photographs. They have crossed the heliopause, where the flow of particles emanating from the sun meets the interstellar medium. At present, there are no other active spacecraft exploring interstellar space. NASA's New Horizons probe, which flew past Pluto in 2015, is expected to reach interstellar space in the 2040s. On March 5, 1979, the Voyager 1 spacecraft reached the planet Jupiter. For the first time, high-resolution images of the planet and its moons were obtained, and Jupiter's rings were discovered. The spacecraft also transmitted a large amount of valuable data, including information on the chemical composition of the atmosphere and magnetic field data. Additionally, data on the temperature of the upper atmosphere layers were obtained. In 1990, the spacecraft's cameras received the final command to rotate and take a farewell photograph of Earth before the interplanetary station disappeared into the depths of space forever. There was no scientific benefit to this, as Voyager was far beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto by that time. The illumination in those areas was 900 times less than on Earth's orbit. The photo was taken using a narrow-angle camera with a focal length of 500 millimeters at an angle of 32 degrees above the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. At that moment, the distance to Earth was 6 billion kilometers. On February 17, 1998, at a distance of 69 astronomical units, approximately 10 billion kilometers from the Sun, the Voyager 1 spacecraft surpassed the Pioneer 10 probe, previously the most distant human-made object.
In December 2011, the probe traveled 17 billion kilometers from the Sun and reached the so-called stagnation region, the final boundary separating the spacecraft from interstellar space. This region is characterized by a doubling of the magnetic field intensity, explained by the compression of the solar wind material, which stops and reverses under the pressure of the interstellar medium. Around the same time, a new method of processing data from Voyager's ultraviolet radiation detectors allowed for the first detection of Lyman-alpha ultraviolet radiation emitted by hydrogen atoms in regions outside the solar system in our galaxy's history. From January to early June 2012, Voyager 1's cosmic ray sensors detected a 25% increase in the level of galactic cosmic rays, high-energy charged particles of interstellar origin. This data indicated to scientists that Voyager was approaching the heliosphere boundary and would soon enter interstellar space. On July 28, 2012, at a distance of about 121 astronomical units from the Sun, the probe sensors recorded a sharp decrease in the number of particles and cosmic rays associated with the heliosphere, accompanied by an increase in the intensity of galactic cosmic rays. Soon after, the readings returned to normal. Such changes occurred five times, and after August 25th, there was no return to normal values. On August 25, 2012, the Voyager 1 spacecraft crossed the heliopause, the boundaries of the heliosphere. On September 12, 2013, a group of scientists led by Donald Gurnett published the results of a study of the surrounding plasma fluctuations, proving that its electron density corresponds to what is expected for the interstellar medium. Although the absence of changes in the direction of the magnetic field remained unexplained, it was acknowledged that Voyager 1 had crossed the heliosphere boundary. Previously, it was believed that crossing the heliosphere boundary should be accompanied by a change in the direction of the magnetic field, but only a change in its intensity was recorded without a significant change in direction. In 2017, the spacecraft's primary engines failed, and Earth activated the spacecraft's maneuvering thrusters for the first time in 40 years. It was discovered that the spacecraft's orientation correction systems had degraded, so scientists attempted to use the trajectory correction engine that had been idle for 37 years. Surprisingly, the launch showed that everything was working fine, allowing the spacecraft's service life to be extended by another three years. Equipment malfunctions have occurred repeatedly throughout the operation of the probes, but each time engineers and scientists managed to solve them. However, in 2022, serious issues with telemetry transmission began, and the spacecraft started sending strange data about its position. NASA engineers explained that this was related to the spacecraft's attitude control and maneuvering subsystem. Although the probe could still be manually controlled, it lost its sense of its current location. Most likely, the cause was the adverse effects of cosmic radiation on the device's navigation system. There were even speculations about the influence of dark matter or substance with negative mass on the Earth-bound apparatus. Of course, we cannot prove or disprove this, but the fact remains that the navigation system started malfunctioning. The project engineers managed to solve the problem by sending telemetry through another computer on the spacecraft. But in December 2023, the situation repeated itself. The telemetry modulation block started sending strange binary code. NASA suspected the problem was with the FDS. This is one of the three computers on the probe, working alongside the central control and monitoring unit and the orientation and guidance device. It also manages the collection of various information from the spacecraft's sensor network and converts it into binary data. The telecommunication block then sends this information to Earth. Perhaps the problem was caused by memory damage in the FDS. Scientists rebooted the system, but it didn't work. The probe continued to transmit incomprehensible data to Earth. 
The spacecraft receives data from Earth normally and understands it, but this doesn't help restore the information exchange. Currently, project personnel continue to send commands to Voyager 1, hoping to localize the problem by correcting the computer's memory. Of course, Earth will continue to receive that same stream of unintelligible data, which will help determine whether the spacecraft is still functioning. But the information no longer holds scientific value. As of now, Voyager 1 is located 24 billion kilometers from Earth and continues its journey at a speed of 61,000 kilometers per hour. Currently, it takes about 45 hours to receive a response from the spacecraft, given the vast distance. It is expected that by 2025, the probe's batteries will be fully discharged. To conserve energy and prolong their service life, NASA is shutting down the onboard systems of the spacecraft. Currently, Voyager 2 has five operational instruments, while Voyager 1 has four. They all draw power from a nuclear battery, which converts heat from the radioactive decay of plutonium into electricity. However, with the diminishing power output over 44 years, NASA has had to transition them into power-saving mode. Two years ago, engineers turned off the cosmic ray detector heater, which played a crucial role in determining the passage of the heliopause. The last two instruments on Voyager, likely to be shut down permanently, are probably the magnetometer and the plasma science instrument. They are housed inside the spacecraft's body, where they are heated by the heat generated by the electronics. How much longer can the Voyagers hold out? According to planetary scientist Linda Spilker of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, it all depends on the power. If everything goes very well, the mission could be extended until the 2030s. However, these are the most optimistic forecasts. It is more likely that the probes will be shut down earlier, around the middle of this decade. Even after the Voyagers are completely shut down, their journeys will continue. Voyager 1 is already so far away that it will not return to the solar system but will fly farther and farther away. In 300 years, it will be at the level of the Oort cloud, a hypothetical sphere of asteroids, comets, and other objects that encloses our solar system and is located at a distance of about one light year. So, in 1200 years, it will be at the distance where the nearest stars to us are located after the Sun, the Alpha Centauri system. But in reality, Voyager 1 is moving in a different direction. It is heading towards the constellations of Hercules and Ophiuchus in the stellar sky. What astounds astronomers the most is that the trajectory leads the probe toward the star Gliese, 445 in the constellation of Giraffe. The fact is that planets have been found near it where life as we understand it could exist. Not to mention the life we do not know and understand. Voyager will only reach there in 40,000 years. And this raises several almost philosophical questions. Firstly, Will anyone be alive there by that time? Secondly, if there is, will they be able to understand what has arrived and what is depicted for them on the golden record carried by this probe? And thirdly, will we still be on Earth by then? If we had the intelligence to survive, we would have learned to fly among the stars ourselves over those 40,000 years.